Hey fam, welcome back to another training week. This time around you're watching the week of February 1st until 6 or something like that. So in New Zealand the last, uh, those two weeks around that time, we had Mondays off because we had a couple of public holidays. Um, and I went on a, on a couple little mini vacations to, to different places. So the week was a little bit different and sometimes I ended up training on, on Wednesday, which I wouldn't usually do. Um, so we're in Germany. I'm in Germany. Uh, it's freezing cold here. We got in yesterday at around noon and the flight was massive. We did a three and a half hour from Auckland to Brisbane. Then I believe it was something like a 15 hour or so, 15 and a half hour from Brisbane to Doha, which is in Qatar. From Qatar, it was six and a half to Berlin. And then from Berlin, one and a half hour drive to Cottbus, which is where the first World Cup is taking place. Um, so all that to say, uh, to, to be honest, it, I didn't feel too bad when we when we arrived. Um, we managed to get a little session at night. They opened the training gym for us. It looks like the competition gym is connected to just a regular club training gym. Um, and the gym was was awesome. I'll uh, I'll include some video when I make the, the whole the whole World Cup tour, tour video. Um, yeah, so we have three days. To, to get ready. Sam and Will compete and Jordan compete and Ethan. Sam, Will, Jordan, Ethan, they got day one, which will be a Thursday. I'm not doing any of the first three apps, so I'll be on Friday. I'm pretty sure they're splitting it three and three, day one and day two for qualifications. Uh, what else? Nothing much else, to be honest. Um, what I did want to do while you guys are watching the build-up was to answer a question that Mike Canales had had posted on one of the videos. Um, so Mike, Mike Canales was at Ohio State University, which is the same university that I I was in, in the States. Here comes my roommate. What's up, Cam? Hi, I'm sorry, you? No, 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 I'm doing a vlog. Say hi. Oh, yo, what's up? There's Cameron. Roommate. Cameron's, Cameron's the judge. Over here is the judge, so giving us all the good advice. We on a live feed or not? No, no, that's not live, not live. Um, so anyway, Mike Canales, uh, I believe he was also on the senior national team at, uh, at a certain point. I remember Mike because whenever we had inter squads at Ohio State at the start of the season, uh, for those that did gymnastics at Ohio State, you know that you invite the alumni. So the alumni come and, and they just, you know, they throw stuff into the pit or anything they want really, just for some fun. And Mike Canales would always put on his, his old Ohio State uniform and he would do cross on rings. I think at one point I remember him doing the, the original Azarian cross, not the front lever, back lever, pull to cross, but the cross where you go, where you go sideways. And all the all the all the Ohio Ohio State lads were just thrilled to see it. Not something you see these days anymore. And I think Mike just does some training here and there uh, in his own time. I know he's a he's an ankle surgeon, very successful one. So, first of all, Mike, thank you for uh, for watching my my trainings. Pretty stoked. And let me just pull up your question. So here's Mike's questions. You spend a great deal of hours training in solitude. What effect does this have on your adrenaline slash energy level when you arrive to competition, when you're being watched by competitors, coaches, and athletes? So yeah, so how does training by myself influence my training or my competition when there's a contrast of being alone to all of a sudden being surrounded by all these people. It's true, I do train pretty much absolutely alone, which I enjoy. Um, 
th there's a plus and a minus there. The, the plus is when you're by yourself, you can really sink deep inside and start to understand how you are, um, start to understand some of that nervous system, your adrenals and how they function. Um, so you can get acquainted with yourself a bit deeper because you're not distracted with talk talking and com conversation. On the other hand, when, for instance, we just had a mock comp uh, the week before leaving here. I remember I did a harmless winter handstand and in the handstand I just start trembling all of a sudden because it's all this extra adrenaline, which I wouldn't have before. Um, the thing there is, as long as you do a few mock comps or a few competitions, eventually it all kind of, you never fully get used to it, I don't think, but, but you do get used to it to some to some extent. So, so the positive there is that even though I might have a bigger adrenaline response when I'm being watched, you just do a few, a few test competitions and uh, you, you kind of just start to understand what to do and, and you're not so nervous uh, the more you do, I suppose. What is your particular procedure of preparing the parallel bars to enhance your grip? Do you find a significant difference between AI speed and Jim Nova parallel bars? <clears throat> Particular procedure for preparing the parallel bars to enhance your grip. I don't. I don't think I do much different to, to anyone else, um, and I don't find too much a difference in grip in bars. What I do find is depending on what season you're in. So, is it a dry season or is it a you know a rainy season? That's what makes the biggest difference. So I noticed that around that December, January period in New Zealand, the bars, as well as the high bar as well, they get really, really dry. So you need a bit more moisture. I'll use more honey and less chalk. Um, and then when it's when it's rainy season, obviously you don't need too much honey. And, and I find the grip I like much better when it's moist during the rainy seasons rather than, rather than the dry season. So pretty much what I do, I'll do honey, if I'm just doing a skill or two, it'll be less. If I'm doing the whole routine, you need to honey more of the bar, so I'll put more, but generally like just a, a few thick drops is all I need. Rub it in good. Uh, first, first I sand down the bar, so I have some, I could probably show you, but it's just a quite thin, weak sandpaper to sand all the chalk off. Put the honey on. After the honey, I'll do a couple layers, a thin layers of chalk. So I don't, I don't just straight away start gripping the bar and rubbing it in. I'll put a couple thin layers, just going left and right with, with my hand, with the bucket underneath, so that I don't spill any chalk. And then after that, just keep feeling the bars until, until it just feels like what I like. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I don't get it right every single time. I, I screw it up a lot. In competitions, I screw it up a lot as well. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's difficult. Plus, when you're when you're nervous and you're rushing a little bit because you don't want to, you don't want the judge to be ready for you, but then still have to finish your grip. Um, there's a funny story I remember. Sam McCulloch. 2014 China Worlds was doing the bars and the judges were ready for them for him. Back then, I think it's still the case, you only get 30 seconds to prep the bar. He took longer than 30 seconds. And the judge the judge was giving him like a like an X with his arms and no, that's it, you can't take your turn. The sand didn't I don't know if he pretended not to see or if he didn't see. But he just saluted <laughs> saluted and went. And the judges just, you know, heads down and started to judge him anyways. Um, that was pretty funny. So uh, yeah, so grip grip is always an issue, I think, for, for a lot of athletes. I know Japanese guys use their own kind of potions and methods. They use a they use a cloth, I noticed, to wipe the whatever fluid they use into the bar with a cloth and, and then they follow through with chalk. China I noticed they get their whole squad on the bars. There's like three, four guys going there at once and uh, you know, preparing the bar for each other. So one more additional thing I gotta say is the first turn is always bad. 
it's really hard to get the grip right straight away because the bars have been dry when there's a bit more moisture second third turn starts to get better and better so i almost don't don't pay attention to my first turn because i know it's not going to be too good if you could turn back time what would you have less what what would you have spent less time doing as a junior gymnast to improve your performance as a senior athlete what would i have spent less time doing as a junior gymnast O overtraining. Cam, how hard did I crank it when I was younger? Oh, dude, there was like barely an hour that you weren't actually in the gym. <laughs> Man, like, without fail, anytime anyone would walk in there, they should be in there. Whether it was 6 a.m. to 8.30 in the morning, go back, he was the first one in the gym from about 3, 3.30 after school until 8.30. Then Saturdays, you'd show up again. Everybody. Okay. This dude didn't know what public holidays were. Yeah, in New Zealand we had like bank holidays, public holidays. Right? Christmas Eve, going to training. Christmas. Oh yeah, god, I remember we would come in on Christmas. This dude went away on Christmas yeah. Eve and he just like wrecked himself. You remember when you cut your forehead over yeah, 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 yeah. That was around that time, yeah. But but there was people there at the time, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, that one there were people there. Yeah. But yeah, just trained like without fail. Um, so too much, too much training too much training back in the day um, and that that caused I think from 15 to 18 years old I had bad shoulder and wrist issues where I almost couldn't train at all pommel horse I couldn't do it all I had to start learning from from one circle when my wrist finally recovered so yeah overtraining less time overtraining and uh, now I'm understanding it's better to leave some for tomorrow it's better to do a little bit every single day rather than a lot one day and then be exhausted for you know for two or three days and last question is what is one thing that you expected to be a substantial issue at the olympic games that ended up being minor what is something you didn't expect to be substantial that ended up being noteworthy hmm. well i think obviously covid was the substantial issue with most with most people. Um, I don't worry about it too much, to be honest. Um, and it was good to see how the athletes, you know, there was still a lot of in interaction happening in the village. Uh, we would be we would be swapping pins with each other in the food courts. You know, you're sitting at the table and you have those plastic screens in between people. Um, so, you know, there were measures in place, but I, I got approached a few times to to swap pins i don't know what pins or badges each country has their own badges and i mean what are you gonna do you know you're gonna say nah sorry you know nah. so yeah the covid wasn't too bad it's just the uh, mask wearing um outside of your outside of your like country's building you just put on a mask and that's it and then something you didn't expect to be substantial that ended up being not worthy we were kind of expecting, I, I don't know if this is the correct way to interpret the questions, but we were expecting to have no crowd. Um, but in the end, especially in the finals, it was almost like a half half stadium full of people. Um, and they were all accredited people, which was a bit fishy. I don't know how many, a lot of them didn't look like athletes. So I'm sure there was a lot of v VIPs or maybe, I don't know, gymnastics lovers in Japan that somehow managed to get to get to get in with an accreditation but there was a lot of people even in qualification day there was a lot of people there so yeah so thank you Mike for the questions um, I hope I answered them sufficiently enough enjoy the rest of the video and uh, I'm gonna catch up on a because I missed a lot of weeks being being busy prepping for these for these comps we got heaps of time over here, so uh, yeah, expect expect videos to come out pretty quick. Till next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coach's Corner. Today, uh, you've just got me hosting John. Um, we've got a special guest joining us today, though, uh, Troy from the Level 7 group. Troy, uh, how's training been going at the moment? Uh, it's going pretty well. 
what an, what an insight. Um, and what about training is going well at the moment? Can you give us uh, what's going good, what's going bad, you know, why and stuff like that? Uh, P-bars and floor are going pretty well, but otherwise my what? bad stuff is actually everything else because I broke my thumb recently. Yeah, so obviously that'll sit you back a little bit in terms of prep for routines. Uh, how are you working around that? Are you training less hours, but just trying to fit everything in? Uh, doing lots of conditioning and stretching. Awesome. Good to hear that you're still going, even with injuries. What's your new skill, What's your new skill on P-bars? And uh, yeah, he has got a new skill on P-bars recently, as Sam does a nice double front there on vault. Uh, I did a back, uh, back tuck off P-bars. Awesome, getting those dismounts ready for the comp season. Love here, you got the boys around cheering. Will almost holding that cross, not quite big effort from him. He's picked up a lot of strength recently, which is good to see. Sam with the rings routine. The boys are off this weekend. as uh, they're, they're, they're ready to go. I mean, I can't say anything else, but um, yeah, they're looking amazing. As you'll see in the videos in this uh, coach's corner, brilliant, brilliant stuff they've been doing. Couldn't be more proud of seeing them go off to World Cup comps. And uh, we've actually got a new addition to the TriStar senior family, um, Jack, from who's moved from North Harbour. Um, Jack, why don't you say hello and a little bit about yourself, your favourite app and maybe a fun fact. Uh, hey guys, I'm Jack. Uh, my favourite app's probably High Bar and uh, I like doing gymnastics. <laughs> Funny that since you're coming to gymnastics at TriStar. We love gymnastics here. That's actually me with a bit of a weird... Rings dismount. Daniel Millis back in the training, working the high bar dismounts. He loves those. Can't get him off them. Spends two hours on high bar on a Saturday just doing high bar dismounts. And this is uh, John. I think this is his first ever Moy. Not too bad. Can definitely uh, get better, but he's progressing it well for his P bars routine. Logan working the uh, vault nicely. Uh, John and Pete actually, um, I'm sure we'll see Pete's stutz in here as well, but they've been pushing the stutz real nice down low, getting it ready to go up high, get up to handstand as well uh, for the routines. And here we've got a lot of high bar coming up, I think. Lots of catch have work from myself, Sam and Will. Logan's getting a go on the taps, but I believe we'll see that next week. Will, straight pike, whatever you want to call it. John almost catching the pike. I know we've got a bit of a special clip from John. Sam with a little bit of a fail. Love to see the boys pushing it hard. Well, oh, hands on, but not quite there. John, again so close. I'm waiting for that clip, man. I'm going to go nuts. Well, should have held on to that one. I believe we'll see some floor routines from the boys while both of them are competing at uh, both World Cups. Oh, unlucky there from Will. Got them and got the transition sped up. No wasting time here. As far as I'm aware, there's a really tidy routine from Will. He's been focusing on those landings a lot, building the endurance, and it's been uh, a pleasure to be able to watch and put the mats in and out for him. Nice control on the press to handstand. Been doing lots of analyzing of the new code, making our routines as efficient as possible for maximum difficulty. I believe we're uh, almost there on most apparatus, just a few things to polish up and uh, f final decisions to make before going into half routines uh, next week for those of us who aren't going away. Beautiful landing on the triple there. Sam has uh, switched out the two and a half that he had at the start for the double pike, keeping the difficulty but maximizing, uh, sorry, minimizing landing deductions, maximizing the profit of the skill. Two and a half punch out, huge there. He could put that into a double front flip later this season or maybe even next year if it's not quite ready. And uh, just nice set up here for nice easy tumble before the dismount into the pit. Just keeping the, keeping the ankles safe before they go away. Don't want to risk anything silly before they go away and jeopardize their chances of a final and potentially a medal from these boys. That's how well they've been training. Talking that stuff, John. John's been working, that's myself working the one and a half punches. Beautiful stick from Sam there. Followed by another stick. Oh, did, my, did someone spill some honey on the floor or something in the corners? Must have done. Another. 
I'm convinced someone needs someone needs to tighten the lid on that honey. But I think here's the clip, catching the pike for the for one of the first times, and then putting it into combination with the straddle and giantning out. That's yeah. the start of his routine, sort of start of my routine, sort of. Sorry, and uh, it's been brilliant talking with you a lot. Catch up with you next week.